Okay, so I know that you guys are wanting to get a little bit more practice with significant figures. Um, specifically, this one is going to be on sig figs. Ah! And, oh, you can't see it. Sig figs and rounding. Okay, so we use significant figures when we are trying to tell how precise we were. And precision, of course, means how um, how like good were our measurements, basically. So, like how how often can we repeat these results over and over again? So precise is how close our measurements are together. So I know it can be a little bit overwhelming when I'm working with like a huge number, like say two, five. One, three. Um, so it's a huge number to work with and to start off with. So let's go ahead and just look at a real world example of like when you'll actually use significant figures. So this is the example of a graduated cylinder. And let's say I'm at 51 and 50. And here's my liquid in there. So a graduated cylinder, I'm going to have milliliters liters signaling to me that I'm going to be studying the volume. So if I look at this graduated cylinder quickly, I'm just going to say 50. And so from this measurement, I'm going to have one sig fig. So I have one significant figure. And I have that because this zero at the end is a placeholder. It's just holding the place for me to get to 50. And there's nothing behind it that suggests that I was more precise with my measurement. And so because there's nothing that says, oh yeah, she was more precise, this is just going to be one sig fig. Now let's say that I get a little bit better about my measurement and I say I have 50.5. So I'm going to have three significant figures. And I have three because when we're looking at sig figs, we're really just saying, like, what numbers are you sure about? When we're looking at precision and we're looking with significant figures, we're asking, what am I sure about? And so for this, I'm saying that 100%, I have this 50.5. And now this last number is going to be plus or minus. So it's my uncertainty principle. So up here, this zero was my plus or minus. But now, my zero is locked in by my five. So I have a zero between two non-zero digits. It becomes significant because I know that I have at least 50 milliliters. And now I'm saying I'm not sure about this third number. So by some happy circumstance, I get a little bit more precise. And I add a zero to the end of my number. This is going to be four sig figs. And it's four because in the same way that I was 100% sure about the 50 in the beginning, now I'm adding on this 0.5. So I'm saying 100% I have 50.5 milliliters in this case. And the zero at the end isn't changing that. The zero at the end isn't altering my number at all. But it is adding to the precision. And because this zero at the end signifies that I was somehow able to get more precise with my measurement, it becomes significant too. So I have four sig figs. So let's go back up to this number. And I'm going to see I have one, two, three, four, five. The zero is locked in, so it's going to be six, seven, eight. Eight sig figs. And now, I'm going to focus on rounding. So if I look at the number from the top, I'm going to rewrite it. 25277013. And it had 8. And let's say that I want to round to 3. So I'm going to get less precise. So I'm going down with my sig figs. I'm getting less precise. Okay? 
So what that means is that I'm going to preserve my first two numbers. So put a bracket around the first two because we're rounding to three. My third one I'm going to change. I look to the number to its right. I see it's a seven, so I'm going to round up. So I have two, five, three. And this is where a lot of you are getting confused. Some of you are saying 0 .00, uh, 0, 0, 0, which is wrong. Some of you are saying just 253, which is also incorrect, because these numbers fundamentally change what I started out with. And we're just working with precision, right? So we're not trying to change the number. We're just trying to change how precise we were. So in order to change that precision, I'm going to add all those zeros back onto the end. So these zeros are now covering up 7,000, no wait, 77, 77,013. And we don't know what it is, but they're covering up this huge value. And because they cover that, we're less precise, right? Which we said we would be. We're at three sig figs, which we said we would be. But these zeros are just holding a place. Now, if I were to add a decimal to the end, suddenly I'm back to eight. Okay? Um, and so another example of placeholders that you guys are getting kind of confused on is this zero, 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 two, one. So again, think about how you're fundamentally changing the number if I got rid of these zeros. So they don't count as sig figs. And they don't count because they have to be there, but they don't say anything about the precision. Like this number up here said something about my precision. This zero said something about how precise I was, and these don't. Okay, so the key concept when you're looking at sig figs is thinking about how precise you were able to be. All right, that's all for sig figs.